Hey, it's Tom and Henry from Inspiration Model Works, and in this week's video, we're going to work on the Tormach lathe, doing some improvements, some cleanup, and uh, one major upgrade that should really make a big difference in the long run. So, one of the things these Tormachs are notorious for is um, having very weak coolant systems. Um, the flood coolant systems that were uh, designed uh, for these these uh, machines really it's designed to work regardless of, of if you had a full enclosure or not. And so they're pretty, pretty weak. And on top of that, if you try to add in anything extra like a, uh, a filter system or anything like that, you're going to quickly find that it just doesn't have the, the power to overcome that pressure and uh, get through it. So today we did some cleanup. We got everything, you know, clean, uh, put all the chips out. I uh, did some serious cleaning, haven't done that in quite a while on this machine. It's, uh, as you can see, it's, it's shining and looking a whole lot better. But the big thing is we uh, went ahead and we upgraded the coolant system. It's not as hard as you might think, and uh, let's, let me show you what we did. All right, on the lathe, the, uh, the coolant collection system is underneath. Um, and uh, as you can see, I've got a little piece of uh, plexi on the side, but uh, I didn't do anything major on this one. I, um, I, I kept the tank. I didn't have to do anything with that. But one thing that I wanted to point out was the, the pump itself. And I, I pulled it out and it's sitting on a bucket right now. This pump, let's see, it's, we have here, stop Henry. I don't even know if it says if it's got a rating on it or not. 75 watt, 115 volt, uh, frequency 60, amperage point 8, see, uh, 12 liters a minute. That's about all I can, I can get off that. Uh, but this is actually the second one that I had. The first one uh, actually died on me. It froze up and I, I pulled the one out of the 440 since I wasn't using that. I've already replaced the, the one in the 440. All right, so let's take a look real quick at what we've got. Thank you, Henry. Got it open. Let's slide this out. Kind of full right now. All right. Let's see. Can you see everything? Yeah. You can kind of see it. Okay. Um, so I pulled the the back part out, and you can see I've got my new pump run here. Uh, this is a quarter horsepower pump. Um, it's nothing super powerful, but it is much more than what was originally there. Um, so, cleaned the tank, recharged everything, got it ready to go. Let's slide this back in. So, not the greatest setup, but it gets the job done. Alright, so what we did on the back side is I mounted a whole house filter. And I'm just running the, uh, the tube from the pump underneath. That hole uh, there in the casting is where the old power cord used to come out. I just ran things underneath. Um, and then, it, this is a big choke point. I'm, I'm using the stock coolant setup. Uh, so we're going from three quarter inch down to half inch, which in reality with that flex tubing and everything, you've got about three eighths of an inch uh, in there where the, the coolant can come through. So I wasn't trying to push mass volume. I really just wanted to get the coolant cleaner because the surface finishes I was getting were not as good as I was expecting. Um, and some of that I think is the coolant itself. So hopefully this will make a big difference. If we look at the uh, previous setup that I did on the 440, you can see that it's much the same setup. Uh, on that one, I made a much larger uh, tank, but you can see it's there. But I stayed with three quarter inch. Oh, and I don't know if you can see it or not. Sorry. It's all kind of dirty right now, but I've got a video on this one as well. So I stayed with three quarter inch all the way to the end and then went to half inch on the uh, the nozzles and that's uh, it's really overkill for a machine this size but uh, it worked well that's also a third horsepower pump uh, a lot more powerful 
So if you're interested in doing this kind of improvement, uh, this kind of setup on your own, I will put links to the equipment that I got in the uh, description below. Um, it will be probably affiliate Amazon links, but uh, you know, click them if you want, you don't have to. Uh, but it's, again, that was that, uh, um, there's a quarter of horse motor. We've got the whole house filter. Seems to work okay. I've heard some uh, rumors about the uh, about these things over time just you know, breaking. I, I don't know. We'll have to see. I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. Um, some other things to note. When you're looking at your fittings and doing all this stuff, um, there's two different kinds of fittings that are going to be used on this system. The pump itself is uh, a hose st uh, size fitting, right? So um, it's got markings for hose fittings. <laughs> the uh, filter is using pipe fittings, right? So they are a different thread. They will not go into each other. So if this one, yeah. So I got it started, but it won't go any further than that because it's not the right kind of fitting. Uh, found out the hard way on that one, yeah. So I got all sorts of fittings here as I was trying to get all that worked out. Uh, it took me a little bit of time, but it's not too bad. I also, on any of the tube, I used a three quarter inch tube. I, I did not use anything. Again, this isn't a high pressure system. Dollar, I think this was a dollar fifty a foot at Ace Hardware. Um, nothing fancy. This is three quarter inch inner diameter. Uh, that's the other thing to keep in mind is that this kind of stuff is measured by the inside of the diameter. Um, so keep that uh, in mind as you're doing it. Uh, also note that if you get the wrong size, if you get a half inch fitting, you'll see it'll go in, right? But it's far too big, even with a hose clamp on here to get a good seal. So make sure you get the appropriate fitting for it. It should be a very snug fit when you're putting these on. Um, I use, from uh, hose cutting, I use this Husky tool. Uh, it is the same tool that I use to cut the PVC conduit. It's the same stuff that I use for the uh, rapid air system as well. Uh, it works really well. So it, it's nice because you can get a nice square cut on things, which is important for some stuff like the rapid air system. Uh, what else? Uh, let's talk about coolant. Let me bring you over here so we can take a look at something. All right. Uh, so I took the time to clean out my system and um, I made the switch from Qualicam to uh, Blazer uh, 735. Uh, one thing to note, I've heard on both of these things, um, and I've been running the, the Blazer and the 440 for the past year, roughly. Um, I haven't seen any difference. As long as you're keeping it at the right uh, uh, concentration, I run mine about um, eight bricks, uh, 8%. So um, I haven't seen anything. Now you notice, on my castings here, you know, the paint's coming off. Uh, I ran nothing but Qualicam 251 in this, and you know, I see paint coming off. Uh, what I don't typically see though is rust, right? Uh, yeah, I, don't, I can't vouch for the quality of the the paint on this thing to begin with, um, and you know, even though the paint has come off in lots of different places, it's not rusting. It's just coming. The paint's coming off, so. To me, yeah, you know, I'd like to have uh, a little bit nicer setup here, but it's not the end of the world. Um, I know for some folks that would be a, a big showstopper. I'll keep you posted on, on what I see with the uh, the Blazer. I, I, I'm still running the Qualicam in the Brother, um, but I notice with uh, with that one, I have uh, I sometimes have uh, rat. I get rashes on my my skin, so I try to try to watch that. I'm I do treat periodically, and actually now's a good time to do it. Uh, whenever I'm not going to be running the system for a little while, anything that's exposed, uh, any exposed metal, I throw some Bow Shield on uh, T9. This stuff seems to work really well, uh, but and I'm happy about it. Oh, you know what? I should have waited to do that because I wanted to show you guys the pump. Um, I, what I don't want to do is do this with this open so let me i don't know if you'll be able to see it from here uh, yeah we'll reposition and then i'll bring it right back all right so i've got it from above and i'm trying to see if i can get 
a good angle where you're not getting too much um, glare from. There we go. We want to turn that coolant on. You can see it's it's definitely doing a good job. Turn it off. And let's just do a quick count. Let's give it a second to drain back. I did not put a uh, uh, a check valve in, so it will drain uh, back. But if I go on one, so you know one two seconds to, for it to come on, it's not bad. Um, those two, I mean, it's basically creating a stream where it's just blasting into a spray. If I change to a different tool, maybe we can just see it coming out. Um, let me go to tool one. Tool one is my, um, my spot drill. And I've got this basically just kind of pointed at the, the tool holder itself. And so it's definitely getting good, uh, good flow. I'm, I'm happy about it. Seems to be doing okay. Yeah, and it's not too terribly loud, but it's definitely a little bit more than what we had before. But uh, anyways, let's uh, let's wrap this one up. So I'm pretty excited about this upgrade. Um, this is one of these things that I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, again, it's just kind of quality of life. It, it doesn't have to have something like this. If you're really good about changing out your coolant regularly and things like that, then adding a filter is not going to make that much of a difference. I'm really trying to get any of that fine particulate out. I don't have pre-filters in place or anything that might be catching some of the fines that uh, make it into the coolant. So, you know, having a filter in there uh, that's going to uh, make sure it's not coming back out and not rubbing and uh, uh, pushing it back into the surface of the material is really going to be an improvement for me. Um, plus, hopefully, it just helps keep the system a little bit cleaner uh, in general. I noticed when I was cleaning up in there that there was some serious crud. I even I even got a small scotch bright pad out and really went uh, went at it. So that's uh, that's it. I uh, hope these tips help you if you decide that you want to uh, do one of these upgrades. Uh, if you haven't already done it, take a look at the uh, the video I made for the 440. Check that out. Uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you again real soon.